In my last video for the Monster Smash game, we created this monster changing states, which is just an image file. I'll show you the image file real quickly with two characters next to each other in a small PNG file. And then it's loaded into the canvas. And if you do a click to run here to run this code in Trinket, and I press a key, the mouth opens. And when I have key up, the mouth closes. So it switches toggles back and forth on this image file um, back and forth based on a key press and the image is loaded using a canvas a HTML5 element canvas so in this in this game this monster smash game which is chapter 6 of the book foundation game design with HTML5 and JavaScript by Rex Vanderswee it's uh, one of my favorite books I use it in my web animation class we're going to continue with this game in chapter six. And the next element that he adds is a timer. So now this is called Monster Smash with Timer. So we're gonna add a timer element to our game. We're just gonna start messing with that. And I'm following along with the book here in chapter six to see how he adds that. So I'll just go down to the bottom of this code here just to play in the JavaScript portion of the code with this idea of a timer. So the first thing he does is he says, window and he covers the set timeout method which will launch a function in this case he names it timer and he's going to launch it after a thousand milliseconds which is essentially a second so this is a thousand milliseconds which is a section a second and then he writes a function um, named timer and we're going to do that here let me uh we move this down here. It looks like I'm messing this up completely. All right, function timer, and I don't need this, and I want this back here, and I'm messing this up, but now it looks good. Okay, console.log, and he logs just a, uh, a tick. All right, something like this. All right, so there we go. So what this will do, if it, if it works correctly, is this set timeout function or method will call the function timer after one second. It should call it only once and send it to the, um, to the console log. So let's test this out. So to do that, I'll open up my uh, inspect in, in Chrome here, go to console, All right, and then I'll just hit play here. And there it is, tick. And notice it happened only once, and it happened about after about a second. We could try it again, and let's say after three seconds. Okay, we'll try that. I'll hit play, and one, two, three, and there it is. All right, excellent. Then the next one he, he introduces is, okay, instead of using the set timeout, we could use the set interval. So the set interval, we'll try that out just to test it. Window dot set interval, and it's going to call timer, and we'll say how about every two seconds. And with the set interval, this should happen uh, repeatedly every two seconds. So we'll try that out. So I'll hit play, and we should see a tick here after two seconds, and then another two seconds. There's number two, three four, and so on. So this is happening repeatedly on a two second interval because we have the 2000 milliseconds. All right, so there are two um, aspects to setting up timers with JavaScript. Then the next one he does is, well, what if you want to um, clear the timer? So for that one, he changes the code a little bit. To clear the timer, he uses a uh, variable, so we'll put that here, named interval. He sets up a variable and he sets that equal to the window dot set interval call timer and we'll say how about every 1000 milliseconds all right so var interval so we have a variable that loads in the set interval we still have a function name timer we still have a function named timer and but in this function he puts in an if statement he says all right I'll tab over here. If counter 
is less than five, then we'll do the we'll do the tick. All right, so hold on, let me set that. If the counter is less than five, then we'll do the tick. And then else, if it's not less than five, we're going to window dot clear interval and we'll clear interval timer. No, I'm sorry, that's wrong. We'll not clear interval the, our own function. We'll clear interval interval. There we go. I guess to do this, you need to have, to use this clear interval, you need to have this set interval put into a variable, and then you can clear it by passing it the variable name like this. Now, this function here, timer, I need a close curly brace here just to make sure that I close that off. All right. And then before I, um, when the timer uh, runs, right, we're going to need a couple of other things. We're going to need a variable named counter, which let's say equals zero, right? Because we said if counter equals, is if counter is less than five, and then after we run this if else, we want to increment counter. So let me just, there we go. We're going to increment counter right here. So counter gets incremented. So what's gonna happen is, is after one second, timer gets called, if counter is less than five, which it is, it'll send a tick. Else, it would clear the interval and basically stop it. Then counter's increased um, to one, and so this should run five times if this works correctly. And maybe in this tick, we'll say um, tick and we'll say tick counter. Let's change it slightly so we know we can separate this over here. Or I could clear this. There we go. And we'll run it. And we should see here there's a tick counter. One, two, three, four, five. And then it stopped because it was cleared. Okay, so that worked. So there's three aspects of using uh, a timer in chapter six in the book foundation game design with HTML5 and JavaScript. We're going to continue on making this Monster Smash game. Okay, so let's incorporate this timer idea into our game. So right now I'm going to comment this out because we no longer need it. So I'll comment this out. There we go. And we're going to incorporate the concept of a timer into this game. Now in the book, this is how he does it. Right now, he says, okay, with a function key down handler, pass it the event, we change the monster state to monster scared, and then we render the game. So he's going to get rid of this. So we'll get rid of that. Okay. And then we're also going to get rid of this key up handler. We're not going to need that. And instead, he says, no, no, no. We're going to, when the key down happens, we're going to call a function called become scared become scared it's going to be a function and then he writes a function which will have the timer in it called become scared so here goes we'll put our timer in here so in the become scared function here we change the monster dot state equal to monster dot scared so that goes in there and then we do a set timeout function and the set timeout function says all right in the when the code it was window dot set timeout so we can put that in if we want so window dot set timeout and this should change the monster to being scared and then after let's say a thousand milliseconds right a thousand milliseconds 
we're going to call become normal. We'll call a become normal function. Notice so when we call this become normal function, which we don't have yet, we don't need the open and close parentheses to call it. All right. And then we render. So basically before we had monster.state, monster.scared, and then render function. Whoops, we'll put that like that. And now we're going to say, no, no, we'll change this to scared. We'll render it. But we're also going to set this timeout and become normal after a thousand ticks. So maybe we want to put this, let's put that over here because it flows better. The idea. So this used to be in here. Now become scared gets called. This is what happens. And then we say in a thousand in one second, a thousand milliseconds, call the function become normal. So now all we need is a function become normal and open curly brace, close curly brace, and we'll take this. We're gonna need that, pretty sure. Monster dot state, state monster dot normal and render. All right, so let's see. Now we don't need to clear this. This is only going to happen once, but it's going to happen every time there's a key down event. So let's see if this works. Click to run. All right, there's the monster. I do a key down, well, let me click in the window here, key down, it opens its mouth, and then it closes the mouth after a, th uh, after a second. Let's see if it works after five seconds. So five seconds here, and I'll save, and then click to run. I'll click in this window here, and then do key down, one, two, three, four, five, and then it closed its mouth. If I do it again, key down, one, two, three, four, five. So now you can see they've just kind of incorporated the closing of the mouth to happen after five seconds or one second, depending on what you want, but you've incorporated the timer into the game just slightly.